What happens when a single launch truck on Guam can delete a bunker in mainland Asia six minutes after the fire button clicks? No jets overhead, no carrier in sight, only a Mach 5 dart that vanishes off radar before defenders can even curse. That weapon's real. It's called the Precision Strike Missile, and tonight we peel back every layer. Long-range fires once belonged to rockets the size of school buses or bombers burning oceans of fuel. But battlefields changed, satellites watch everything, air defenses swap planes, and rivals build keep-out zones that stretch halfway across the sea. The U.S. Army, yes, the Army, needed a new trick. Hit farther, faster, cheaper, without begging the Air Force for a runway slot. Enter PRISM, a slender composite tube that outruns Mach 5, slips into any HIMARS pod, and already owns a U.S. contract ceiling of $4.9 billion to replace the TACOMs over the next decade. In the next quarter hour, we'll break down its engineering, trace its family tree from Desert Storm to 2025 flight tests, and drop you inside a fictional crisis where PRISM decides a war before breakfast. Then we'll tackle the hard questions. Arms control fallout, supply chain bottlenecks, and the unnerving race to push range past a thousand kilometers. Ready? Segment one loads in three, two, one. Prism is deceptively simple, a one-piece solid fuel motor wrapped in carbon epoxy, steering fins clipped flush until they pop at burnout. Less drag, less weight, greater range. Flight in four beats. One, cold launch shock. A gas generator spits the missile clear of its canister. Two, boost. Solid propellant lights. The dart hits Mach 5 plus within 10 seconds. Three, mid-course glide. An inertial platform mines attitude while MCO GPS corrects drift. Lose satellites? Fiber optic gyros keep the maths honest for several hundred kilometers. Four, terminal dive, future seekers, dual band RF plus imaging IR, flip the missile nose down, cue in on heat or radar reflections and crack concrete with a steel penetrator warhead or airburst fragmentation. Pilot's choice. Two prisms now fit where one attackums once rode, doubling a battery's magazine without a single new vehicle. Same truck, twice the bite. Think of replacing your DSLR with a smartphone. Lighter, smarter, upgradable by software. Great tech, big numbers. But missiles don't erupt from spreadsheets. They grow out of history's potholes. Let's rewind. During Desert Storm, Army radar crews hunted scuds with 90s computers and wishful thinking. Attackums gave them a 300-kilometer hammer, but cost a fortune. By 2014, Russia's annexation of Crimea and China's island-building spree shrunk the Pacific for U.S. forces. Airfields sat inside enemy missile rings. Early Pentagon brains LRPF and Deep Strike crashed against budgets. Only when the INF Treaty collapsed in 2019 did Congress greenlight full-range development. Lockheed Martin's clean sheet design burned its first motor at White Sands that December, and the debut shot hit within one meter of aim. Deliveries began in December 2023. By March 2025, Lockheed secured a multi-year deal to accelerate output, scaling from 72 to 400 missiles per year by 2028. Three production lines snack on carbon fiber and U.S.-made solid propellant, but advanced chips and rare earth magnets still trace back to foreign mines a potential Achilles heel will revisit. Lab hits are cool. Combat chaos is cooler. Let's take a look at a quick scenario. 0500 July 8, 2028. Weather calm, tension volcanic. A Chinese naval blockade pinches Taiwan's last resupply lane. On a reclaimed atoll, three S-500 Prometheus radars knit a kill web no friendly aircraft survives. Phase one, find. Overhead, a constellation of Firefly nanosats Beams radar snapshots to Camp Hansen, Okinawa. An unmanned MQ-9 Stingray relays real-time imagery. Coordinates lock. Phase two, fix. A HIMARS platoon, six trucks, eight personnel, rolls out of a camouflage pineapple plantation. Two soldiers program waypoints. The convoy halts under a carport-sized Typhon command trailer. Phase three, finish. 0612 local, four prism scream skyward. Cruising above 60,000 feet, they update guidance via Link 16 pushes from a Navy E-2D 400 kilometers away. At T-15 seconds, each missile slews 40 degrees off axis, diving at Mach 4. Two Pierce radar arrays, the third buries itself three stories deep into the island's hardened command bunker, and the last, a blackout bomb, blasts a megawatt EMP spike across local comms gear. Outcome. With radars dark, Marines riding MV-22s 
storm the atoll under F-35B cover. A full-scale amphib assault never materializes. The blockade gambit crumbles before lunchtime. Four missiles, $20 million, zero pilots lost. Textbook efficiency, unless you're on the receiving end. Adversaries aren't idle. Every action births a counteraction. Controversies and challenges, escalation. Base a high Mars with Prism in Poland, and Moscow's Baltic Fleet HQ sits inside a two-minute strike window. The fear? Crisis instability. In a cyber-blinding first strike, commanders might reach for Prism early. Too tempting, too fast, too irreversible. Arms control vacuum. The INF Treaty once capped U.S. ground-launched missiles at 500 kilometers. That ceiling's gone. Prism Block 1A just proved a 650-kilometer shot in March 2025. Beijing calls it a disguised first strike weapon. Washington counters deterrence, cost and supply chain. At roughly $1.8 million a pop, Prism beats cruise missiles on price. But at full-scale war, the Army might fire 200 a week. Current chip shortages already slowed seeker production last winter, pushing increment two tests by three months. Countermeasures. China's HQ-19 interceptors and Skynet electronic jammers aim to trash GPS windows. PRISM's answer is the forthcoming multi-mode seeker, but tech maturity lags two years behind schedule, meaning early fielded rounds remain GPS dependent. Enter the upgrade train. Bigger brains, further reach, even swarm payloads. Buckle up. PRISM isn't a one and done round. It's a living platform that the army intends to grow in five distinct leaps. First comes the baseline missile, Increment 1, already rolling off the Arkansas line. It flies roughly 500 kilometers with a single high-explosive unitary warhead and gives every HIMARS crew double the magazine depth of Attackums. Hot on its heels is Increment 1A, the extended range tweak. Engineers shaved weight from the motor casing, widened the nozzle, and squeezed another 100 plus kilometers out of the same footprint. In a March 2025 shot, they proved a 650 kilometer reach, enough to hit Kaliningrad from Western Poland or slice across the Luzon Strait from Northern Luzon. Increment 2 is the real game changer. A dual mode seeker, active radar up front, imaging infrared nestled beside it, lets Prism hunt moving ships, relocatable air defense launchers, even convoys weaving through mountain passes. Captive carry tests began in spring 2025, and if the schedule holds, soldiers will field seeker-equipped rounds by 2028. Beyond that sits Increment 3, nicknamed Swarm Connect. Here, DARPA wants each missile to act like a node in a mesh network, sharing target data in flight. Picture half a dozen darts talking to each other, juggling assignments so that if one gets intercepted, the rest reshuffle and still finish the job. Increment 4 pushes raw distance. Think the 1,000-kilometer class. Designers bolt a lightweight booster section to the current airframe, swap steel for next-gen composites, and eye shots that stretch from Okinawa to the Chinese mainland. Ground static fire tests have already cracked the 1,000 kilonewton thrust mark. Finally, Increment 5 peers into the 2030s. The Vision. Autonomous launchers, robotic trailers trundling off-road, firing without a human within miles, and software that can turn a single missile into a temporary data relay or even a mothership, releasing micro-drones over the target before slamming home. From first issue to future swarm leader, that's the planned life arc of PRISM. A missile designed to evolve faster than its enemies can build walls. More range, smarter brains, robot crews, each upgrade multiplies capability but also multiplies geopolitical stress. Which allies are willing to host these evolving spears, and what does that do to the global chessboard? Segment 6 dives in next. Under foreign military sales rules, PRISM is already tagged for Australia, Japan, and Poland, all HIMARS operators eyeing Chinese expansion or Russian artillery. Canberra plans to pair PRISM with its own Ghost Bat autonomous drone wing, letting missiles hunt and drones confirm kills. Tokyo's Ministry of Defense wants a maritime variant to guard the Ryukyus. Warsaw sees PRISM as a land-based substitute for air-launched JASMs if runways fall under Iskander fire. Politically, each deployment nudges the deterrent style, but also paints the host nation onto an adversary's first strike list. Quiet debates simmer. Will European states allow US control over launch authority or demand dual key arrangements? The answer could determine whether PRISM's tripwire effect deters war or hard codes automatic escalation. Zoom out farther. PRISM isn't a lone wolf, it's a node in a data swarm. The Pentagon's joint all-domain command and control vision turns every sensor into everyone's targeting feed. In tests, 
Prism flight computers absorbed live satellite RF pings, re-aimed in-flight, and struck a pop-up mobile launcher 80 kilometers from the original aim point, all without human joystick tweaks. Add Cloud AI. Algorithms forecast where a radar will roll next, not where it sits. The missile's software receives a moving probability box, diving on the highest confidence pixel. One senior officer quipped, we're putting predictive policing into munitions. Others worry about algorithmic error fogging the laws of armed conflict. DARPA's Mosaic Warfare demo even floated a missile as server idea, a prism tailing a B-21 stealth bomber relays, encrypted comms to underwater drones, a flying data node disposable after one hop. It's hardware turned software in an age where bandwidth is ammunition. Which brings us to our final reckoning. Does Prism stabilize the chessboard or smash it? The precision strike missile collapses time and distance. For commanders, that's deterrence. Strike moving targets before they strike you. For diplomats, it's anxiety. Cycles of action shrink from hours to minutes, nudging nuclear thresholds. It's engineering dazzles. Composite motors, plug and play seekers, digital brains that may one day spawn drones mid-flight. Its price point promises quantity. Its deployment promises to complicate every enemy's war plan. Yet every new kilometer of range, every extra seeker mode, bends the risk-reward curve toward first strikes. So we ask you, viewer, does Prism speed keep soldiers alive? Or does it shorten humanity's fuse? Drop your verdict below. Should allies rush to field the spear or press for a new arms control scaffold before Block 4 tests in 2030? Hit subscribe for the next deep dive, hypersonic interceptors, and as always, keep your intellect sharp and your curiosity on target.